So I want to return uh, to a subject which is, um, well, it's been around an awfully long time, this post office scandal. Um, and these post office scandal inquiry chair, uh, he has brought forward hearings about compensation as it emerged that... Um, well, suffering began some two decades ago. Many of the postmasters and postmistresses who were falsely accused of fraud, some actually being convicted, even going to prison, uh, many bankrupted, many just facing absolute shame in their local communities. They are still waiting for compensation, not just for the way they were wronged, but even for the money that they often had paid to the post office, having been told they had uh, uh, basically wrongly taken money from post office coffers. Well, one of those people is Tim Brentnell. He's a former sub postmaster who's convicted of fraud and is still waiting for compensation. He joins us now. Good morning, to you, Tim. Good morning, Julia. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, uh, you um, you are among the, I mean, many, and it really is an awful lot of people who uh, uh, faced these accusations, these false accusations uh, from the post office that you were basically fiddling the figures, stealing money, defrauding the post office, when actually it was a new computer system that they had brought in, which was faulty, weren't you? Yes, that's right. Well, uh, there, were, there were several hundred of us uh, convicted over the period of um, about 12 years from, from 2000 when they introduced the Horizon system up until they stopped prosecuting people in, in around 2013 that they prosecuted uh, over 700 of us. I mean, a huge number of people. And each person, when they were told there's a problem by the post office, there's a problem with your, your auditing, your computer system, and you're cashing up at the end of the day, the end of the week, um, each of you were told, well, <laughs> if this, is, this isn't a problem affecting anyone else. It, it must be you. You must be up to something or you're doing something wrong with the figures. Yeah, exactly that. I was audited and a shortfall of £22,500 was found. Um, when I questioned that, uh, and told the, the auditors investigators that um, I couldn't explain uh, where that shortfall had come from. I didn't understand it. It must be, uh, in my opinion, a problem with the computer or their system. I was told literally verbatim those words that I was the only person that was having problems with the computer. And, and everyone was told exactly the same thing again and again and again, and people facing um, a fraud. No, you knew you weren't a criminal. You knew yes. you hadn't committed fraud. You, you've done the numbers again and again. You cannot work out why there are thousands of pounds of shortfall, but you basically t you, you basically paid the post office the money that they said you owed them. How much was it, and how did you get hold of that money? Well, uh, the, I, when I was audited, it was a shortfall of £22,500. Um, I had to pay it because they told me that if I did not pay it, they would charge me with theft of that money. So I had to raise the money from from my savings, from family savings, from business savings. Um, and luckily, uh, we were able to uh, raise enough money to stop them charging me with theft. But as soon as, as soon as that was paid, I was then immediately, almost the next day, they charged me with false accounting. Good Lord. I mean, so you, so you, you got prosecuted for that. You were basically facing a prison sentence. So yes. you pleaded guilty. Um, how painful must that have been to plead guilty to a crime you did not commit? I don't think anyone could ever understand how it feels to be in that situation unless you've been there. In, in, in my heart, um, initially, I was determined to fight that accusation and plead not guilty, but um, my barrister explained to me that standing up in Crown Court against the post office yeah. and saying not guilty, who was the jury going to believe? There was a strong likelihood that I would be found guilty and I'd have a custodial sentence. So on, on their advice, um, it was to plead guilty to avoid a prison sentence. Yeah. Um, but of course, it wasn't just, um, you know, paying, paying 22 grand that you didn't actually steal back and getting that criminal conviction. You, you then had to face, well, in fact, you're now somebody who's not a man of good character and standing. You, know, you can't get another job if you've if you're got a criminal conviction like that. Um, and of course, in your local community, you've gone from being... You know, the, one of the, I suppose, the, the heart of the local community, aren't you, really, when you're a, a sub postmaster? Everyone knows you. you. Everyone knows you have to be a fine, upstanding character to even get that job. There are lots of tests for that. Suddenly, you're just Mr. Dodgy Fraudster, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, as, as you said, Julia, it's a very, it was a very arduous selection process to even be considered to run a, a post office. You had to be 
you know, squeaky clean with no previous uh, sort of uh, criminal or financial troubles. Um, and uh, being a postmaster, you are sort of very central in the community. Um, you know, everyone in the community comes to you um, for services and advice um, uh, numerous times. Um, and then immediately when you're audited and suspended, you're removed from that position. Yeah. So the whole the whole village and wider community knows something's wrong because you've been removed from that post. And they're all presumably pointing and whispering, oh, yeah, he got done for fraud, you know, that guy, yeah, we thought he was a good guy. I mean, this is the thing, yeah. this, is, this is people's worst nightmare. Yes, um, and it's followed... I mean, my conviction was in 2010, but some people were 10 years before that. Yeah. But it's followed me for the last 12 years. When I've tried to apply for jobs, a fraud conviction never drops off your record. No. Um, so I've never managed to get to an interview. And even when applying for jobs, I'd start to write letters um, covering the application, saying that this has happened, but please look at... Um, the history of this, but the, no, no... Yeah, please believe me, I'm not that person. The thing is, that, uh, this inquiry is going to hopefully get to the bottom of a lot of this. It, it seems so obvious to me that the, the post office knew. Somebody at the post office knew this was happening to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and they carried on instead of admitting there was a fault with their computer. And I think, frankly, one of them needs to be going to jail for that, what they've done to people like you. Uh, you're still seeking compensation, so not just for not just for the money you had to pay back for the for the false conviction, for, for also just for all the, all the money in the you've not earned and for the loss of your good reputation and your good name but there are many others who are much older than you you're 40 um, and there's big fear that you know there are people who are dying with their reputation sullied with their families still thinking that they are criminals yeah i mean when when i was when i was accused of the, the theft initially we had to raise that money within a week um, to stop that charge from happening. Yeah. Um, when I was convicted, the the costs um, and fines, etc., had to be paid within a month. Um, now it's more than twelve months since the first um, group of people had their convictions quashed last year. Mine was actually the second group in June, um, and at that point we all thought, well, this is fantastic, which it still is, but it was going to be a new start, and we were all going to be able to yeah. move on with our life. We're now twelve months later. Um, yes. Uh, out of the 72 of us uh, that have had our convictions quashed, we have had um, what um, the post office called an interim compensation payment, which allowed us to pay off some debts, but it's nowhere near... No. Um, I mean, thank goodness, I mean, the chair of this inquiry, Judge, uh, uh, former Judge Wynne Williams, is saying that we, these issues need to be addressed sooner rather than later. I certainly hope they are. Time is uh, out for us, unfortunately. But I'm, I'm so pleased you came and talked to us about the situation, because I think a lot of people think, this is done and dusted, this issue's been resolved, and, and everything's made good, and it's not been, and people are still suffering, like you, who've done absolutely nothing wrong. I think not just to the threat of prison, but they're having your good name sullied as well. Uh, Tim Brednall, former sub-postmaster, convicted of fraud, still went to conversation. Really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the time is uh, 8.